Well, hello, good people and Eagle fans. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, we have some clarification. The Cowboys, of course, are also doing their cuts. Peyton Hendershot was let go. That's kind of a surprise. When you think that Peyton Hendershot with Jake Ferguson, they were almost known as the Blues Brothers, um, you know, their rookie year. And it seemed like Peyton Hendershot's uh, stock was sky high. Um, some injuries and just not progressing has been kind of the downfall there um so we'll see if they bring him back because don't remember they uh have to make these cuts if people clear waivers you're going to bring back 15 of them to be on your practice squad so you know that that's where we are with that but i want to actually talk about right now cd lamb's contract is now the details are in this and i've talked about how the cowboy excuse me how justin jefferson who is the benchmark of the contracts, um, how Justin Jefferson's contract was done. What they did with Justin Jefferson, and actually let me go ahead and get this, get Justin Jefferson so we can look at it, um, his contract. Justin Jefferson over the cap. Um, let's push this up here. Justin Jefferson, okay. First year, $8.612 million, right, for his um, contract, the cap number. The cap number right now for him, 8.6, right? The second year, they decided we're going to keep his salary real low, base salary, you know, $1 million next year, and keep his salary at, or cap number at 15. The next year, they bumped up his base to 24, in which case his cap number balloons to 38, and then it balloons after that to 47. Now, here's what I'm going to say. Here's what I'm going to say is, basically, after 2026, they can walk away and not pay that 43 and just take a $14 million dead hit, okay? Now, this is one way of looking at this as saying, let's get some cap space now so that way, you know, we'll worry about it down the road. It's kicking the can down the road. So basically, they've got the first two years, $23 million in salary going to Justin Jefferson, along with saving $10 million off of the um, fifth-year option, okay? In essence, what they're really paying is uh, about $14 million for him the first two years, but then you see 38, 43, 47. Okay. Let's look at the Dallas Cowboys here. We have CD Lamb. So when you see this, his cap number this year, 8.7, almost identical. Identical to Justin Jefferson's, okay? Which you say that's pretty good because at the moment, the Cowboys are sitting there with almost $21 million of cap space. Basically, they're not going to use that much more of that. You're going to lose some players and sign some other players and stuff, but probably somewhere around $15 million. You'll be able to roll into next year. Now, let's break it down to C.D. Lamb's number, the whole contract, the way it break, broke down. Now, the Cowboys, here's what I'll say about the Cowboys before we look at it. One thing the Cowboys have done that have gotten them into the situation here is if you look at Dak Prescott's contract, they kept it low in the front end. They ended up making Dak Prescott's first year. They got his contract, the $160 million deal, and they immediately restructured it the first year. So it was a $17 million cap hit. So you have a $40 million per year, but you only took 17 that first year. The second year, it was 19, and then it was 26, which ballooned up into the 55, okay? C.D. Lambs, they've taken a different approach. Yes, this first year, you see what they did here. The base salary, $1 million, right? Which gets us down to 8.75 uh, cap number this year. You know, back to Justin Jefferson, right? Everybody's got ads. Basically the same thing. So Justin Jefferson's deal is basically $100,000 less than, than C.D. Lamb's. 
But here's where they differed. They ended up making the base salary for Justin Jefferson only $1 million. CeeDee Lamb, they went ahead and took the lion's share of that contract. 26 right there, which means his cap number for next year is 35. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Which, if you're looking, oh, 35. Okay, so 35 and the 8-7. So let's back up here for a second. This is going to get to be confusing, but follow me here for a second. If you take the 35 plus the 8.7 and put that together, basically you've got 45 million. Okay? But, but you also have to take into consideration that you're actually saving 10 million from this year's number. So in essence, it's really more like 35 million that you're paying CD the first two years. In essence, 35 divided by two is 18 million is what he's basically costing you this year and next year, which is on paper. I'm just saying this is on paper because he got a check for $38 million yesterday. The signing bonus. So what you're looking at is basically $18 million for this year, $18 million for next year, effectively, because you could roll $15 million into the salary. Now, if we go back to the Dallas Cowboys, oops, um, cap space, let's go back to cap space. So in essence, and I've probably lost half of you already that you're sleeping. It's just like, just tell me, you know, just don't, just, just give it to me straight. In essence, the Cowboys have $20 million right now, today. And if we look at next year, having him signed, we're looking at having $30 million left. So you say, wait a minute. We had 65. Yes, we did. But. If they don't spend that 21 that they have right now, say 15 of that rolls over. So in essence, you have 45 next year. Okay. So you're like, uh, your head's swimming. I get it. I get it. So here's the deal. This is where you almost have to do Dak Prescott. See, Dak Prescott's going to cost you $40 million next year if he's not on the roster. He's costing the 55 this year. What you can do with Dak's contract is you can basically make his cap number for next year probably less than the 40 and gain some more cap space. You're going to take that cap number and you're basically going to use some of the voidable years and so on with that to basically hide it. And so then you've got the situation where you got about 30 free agents. But the way the Cowboys hide contracts you can, I mean, the way you, you know, assign these veterans that are dirt cheap, you'll end up being able to do that. The problem is going to be is when you start having to pay guys like Tyler Smith, that's going to be coming up and Micah Parsons. And the problem here is if you have Dak Prescott, Demarcus Lawrence, Zach Martin, and Brandon Cooks, all of which the lion's share of the money is voidable years, it behooves you to actually have Zach Martin and DeMarcus Ware come back so you're not taking those big cap hits and not having players to replace them. So this is good news, but it's a way of the Cowboys being able to say, if CeeDee Lamb doesn't work out in two years, they could walk away with only a $20 million, or excuse me, a $17 million cap hit. So they're looking more of, we don't want to have an Armageddon year where all the bills come due, we'd rather go ahead and pay for that now. And this is where I think that Dak Prescott comes in. So hope that clarifies it some to you guys and makes it a little bit easier to understand that um, the Cowboys aren't doing like what the Eagles have done. The Eagles basically have kept the first couple years dirt cheap, but basically three, four years from now, all those contracts are going to balloon up, in which case they're going to have to gut the roster and start all over. The Cowboys are trying to avoid that Armageddon. All right, good people. I got to go back over here and do some more work on this house. Got to finish changing the porch boards and get the sucker painted. As always, I appreciate y'all. Peace out.